June and Stu Irwin in Trouble with Father. Don't forget, today is it. By June a present. <laughs> if you do forget, don't come home. He's heading for the stairs now, Mom. It's your last chance, everybody. I'll bet you two to one he doesn't know it's your anniversary. I'll take that bet, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, Jackie, Adele, stop all this nonsense. It isn't really our anniversary. It's just the anniversary of the day we became engaged. What difference does it make if he remembers or not? Oh, I can see it doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> Hello, Adele. Hi. What do you hear from Harry? Oh, everything's great. Mm -hmm. I'll have to settle for coffee. I'm late again. How come, Pop? Something on your mind? As a matter of fact, there is. I broke a shoelace. Had a terrible time finding another. Honey, would you please get me a few extra pairs? Of course, dear. No use wasting your time trying to remember those little things. Mm. Uh, Jackie, if you're ready, you may ride to school with me. No, thanks, Pop. I'm going to stop off at Stuffy's house. Today's his anniversary. Anniversary? Six months to the day that he got his white rabbits. Oh, <laughs> that's a very important event. You know, it would be very thoughtful if you went down to the pet shop after school and bought him a little present. Say, a package of pellets or something. Ooh, I have to go. Goodbye, Donald. Goodbye, dear. See you. What'd I tell you? Oh, Adele, stop making such a fuss. I'm sure by the time he gets home tonight, he will have remembered. And if I don't get some work done around here, I won't have time to buy him a present. Gee, Mrs. Johnson, I'm worried. What if Pop really does forget? Mom's feelings will sure be hurt. Jackie, you're right. Maybe I'd better dash down to the Bon Ton department store and pick her up a purse. That's what your father always gets her anyway. Then if he really does forget, I can slip it to him at the last minute. Sure, and then tomorrow she can exchange it for something she really does want. And everybody will be happy. <laughs> Hello, George. How are you? Hey, Stu. What are you doing here? Well, I was going next door to get a purse, but I thought I'd come in here and browse around a little first. Uh, it's the anniversary of the day June and I were engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, you amaze me, still being able to remember things like that. The family thinks I've forgotten, but I didn't this year. I'm really going to surprise June this time. Well, as my wife always says, you can't go wrong on jewelry. <laughs> as a matter of fact, she just picked out this necklace for her mother, for Ooh. a going away present. Oh, that's very lovely. Well, it should be. It costs $1,500. And what grabs me is the fact that neither Gladys nor her mother can tell the difference between real pearls and the simulated ones like these. Well. I'm sorry, Mr. Selkirk. The repairman is out. It will take about 20 minutes to have the defective clasp repaired. But I can't wait. I'm a half an hour late for a board meeting now. Look, George, I'll be glad to wait until it's ready. You can pick it up at my house on your way home this evening. Well, that's very generous of you, Stu. All right, Mr. Evans, just give it to Mr. Irwin when it's fixed. I'll be running along. Thanks again, Stu. Think nothing of it. Yeah. I wonder if I could see some of these simulated necklaces while I'm waiting. Why, yes, sir. This is one of our best sellers, only $79.95. $79.95, yes. huh? I'll take it. Good. You know, to tell you the truth, I can't tell the difference between the real and simulated myself. <sighs> well, that's perfectly understandable. A good many people can't. But I assure you, sir, there's quite a difference. Here, here, let me show you. <laughs> uh, notice the uh, delicate pink overtones on the soft white background. A rosé, we call it. Each pearl has perfect symmetry with a balanced gradation toward the back of the necklace. I assure you, Mr. Irwin, this is a rare bargain at $1,500. If you say so, that's good enough for me. Now, if you'll just have the class fixed, I'll write you out a check. Yes, sir. 
I tell you, Junie, it's the truth. I saw him buying that $1,500 necklace with my own eyes. Aren't you thrilled? Thrilled? Adele, this is terrible. Terrible? Huh. A catastrophe like that should happen to me. You will let me borrow it, won't you? But you don't seem to understand. All I bought him was a 1250 sports shirt. Well, that's the very best thing you could have done. After all, to pay off a necklace like that, you've got to start economizing somewhere. Mm, but not on an occasion like this. No, I'll just have to go out and buy Stu something really worthy of what he's giving me. Well, that's fine, but where are you going to get the money? Well, Adele, if you're going to be borrowing the necklace, I'm sure you won't mind if I borrow some money from you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jackie, is your father home yet? No. Why all the private eye stuff? All right, Adele. <laughs> oh. I don't mind paying the down payment on these things, but I don't know why I should be catty. Wow, aren't these the clubs the pastor raving about? What's the scoop? I'll explain later. Right now, we have to hide them in the den before your father gets here. That's the necklace, and he wouldn't have locked it up if it wasn't valuable. Oh, I'm dying to see it. Well, stop dying. Come on, take a look. <laughs> oh, I couldn't. What would Stu say? Well, Stu doesn't have to know anything about it. That's right, Mom. We all saw him start upstairs. He'll shower and change clothes like he always does. Oh, no, I, I couldn't. <laughs> now, look here. The whole point of the present was to make you happy, right? Yes. Well, look at yourself. You're not very happy. Oh, that's true. Well, then, take a look. Well, we'll just take one little peek and put it right back. I better do it. You're too nervous, too. Be careful. Don't break the ribbon. Oh, or tear the paper. Your nervousness is contagious. You, you better let me do it. I'm too young to be nervous. Uh, don't, don't, don't rip the paper. No. Oh, dear, the ribbon. Uh, I guess I've grown up, Mom. Oh, that's silly nonsense. Oh, And there's no doubt about it, they're genuine oriental pearls. Oh, put them on, Junie. Oh, no. Well, if you don't, I will. Don't you dare. How do I look? Like a movie star, at least. June, you were just made for pearls. Uh, Hello, everybody. I didn't know you were in here. Well, uh, well, June, what are you doing with this necklace? Well, you see, dear, I... I... It's all my fault, Stu. Huh? Uh, when I found out that you were giving June that $1,500 necklace, I just... I was giving her what? The jig's up, Pop. Mrs. Johnson was in the jewelry store when you got it. Bill Johnson, just because you saw me looking at a $1,500 necklace doesn't give you the right to... I spoil your surprise. I know it, Stu. I know it. You're absolutely right. I just lost control. Please forgive me. <laughs> it isn't a matter of forgiveness. Look, we have to get this straightened out once and for all. June, about that necklace... It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, and I have the most wonderful, generous husband in the world. Oh, all right, John. I don't like it and all that, but... Gee, Pop, I hope I can find a man as generous as you when I get married. Girls, please, now, listen There's to me. There's nothing to say, honey, except you shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't. I mean, well, in that case, look... But I'm glad you did. Oh, you are. Well, I... Uh... I'll get it. 
And to show my appreciation, I bought you that match set of golf clubs you've been wanting. June, that set cost $250. So what? Huh? That's mere chicken feed compared to what you paid for June's necklace. Yes, I guess so. Well, hello, everybody. Oh, George, <laughs> I didn't expect you so early. I... Well, that's a mighty attractive necklace, June. Thank you, George. As a matter of fact, Stu just gave it to me. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> well, you must have had to eat an awful lot of oysters to come up with a set like that, Stu. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know about that, but they'll have to eat a lot of hamburger to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> On his salary, that's very funny. <laughs> well, I've got to be running along. Stu, if you'll just give me that... Uh... The lawnmower. What? Yes, it's out in the garage. I'll get it. <laughs> Stu, what's got into you? Just want to be sure the girls aren't listening. Well, what difference does that make? Just give me the necklace and I'll go. That's just it, George. I can't, at least not tonight. What are you talking about, Stu? You picked it up, didn't you? Yes, but there was a mix-up. June opened up the wrong package. That necklace she's wearing belongs to your mother-in-law. Well, I thought it looked awfully good. Uh, what? Please, look, I'm in a terrible spot. She thinks the $1,500 necklace is hers. If I take it away from her tonight on our anniversary, it'll break her heart. Well, I sympathize with you, Stu, but what about my mother-in-law? She's waiting up in the hotel room now for that gift, and Gladys is with her. Now, look, June knows the difference between real and simulated pearls. But you said yourself that your wife and your mother-in-law don't. So, look, you give her these tonight. And tomorrow morning, I'll tell June everything. Please, George, you have to help me out. Well, all right, but just for tonight. But I'm warning you, if anything goes wrong, I personally will feed you to the sharks on a half shell. All right. My mother, they're beautiful. Well, you know Evans Jewelry Store, nothing but the best. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, we'll just put these away for the time being. Not so fast, George Selkirk. Are you sure this is the necklace we picked out? <laughs> Looks a little different to me now. No, it doesn't. Wait a minute. It's that box. My necklace came in an oblong box. Those simulated pearls that sold for $79.95 came in square boxes like this. Uh, Mother, please. There may have been a mix-up in boxes, but I assure you, these are the genuine pearls. Well, I certainly hope you're right, George Selkirk. Now look, Mother. I'll take these down to the jeweler first thing in the morning and double-check. Oh, that won't be necessary, George. Adele Johnson called this afternoon, and I invited her and the Irwins for dinner tonight. Now, June knows a lot about pearls. We'll just ask her, huh? Hello? Oh, George. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, Stu. I did my best to bluff my way out of it. But when June gets there and sees the simulated pearls, the whole story will come out, and, and she'll never forgive me. Well, what do you think my mother-in-law is going to do to me? I tell you, Stu, we're both in hot water up to our ears. Now, be calm, George. Uh, there's a way out of this. I'll get the real pearls from June, and we'll switch them before the women meet. You get your wife and your mother-in-law out of the hotel suite and leave the key someplace where I can find it. All right. There's a sand urn in the hallway just outside the door. I'll hide the key there. When you get inside, just slip the pearls inside my mother-in-law's jewel box in the bedroom. And hurry! Who was it? Oh, um, a wrong number. Honey, you look beautiful. You haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> Will you help me with the necklace? Oh, I... I didn't know you were planning to wear it tonight. Oh, of course. I want the whole world to know what a generous husband I have. Yeah, well, that's all very flattering, but we shouldn't overdo this. I mean, uh, well, Adele hasn't anything as expensive as this. You might embarrass her. Oh, nonsense. It was Adele who suggested I wear it. Oh. Will you pass it for me? Oh, all right. This clasp seems to be broken. Look, it's... Uh, huh. Oh, of all time. Now, don't you worry. I'll rush right out and see if I can find a jeweler that's still open. Oh, honey, it's not that important that I wear it tonight. Oh, now, yes, it is. You go on down to the hotel with Adele. I'll try to get it fixed and meet you there. Well, all right, dear. But even if you can't get it fixed, I want you to promise me you won't do anything rash. Like buying me a $1,500 clip to go with a necklace. Oh. Why don't we go down to the bar and leave word for the others to join us there? Well, it was perfectly comfortable here. Well, I, I thought we might have a couple of cocktails before the others got there. Just the three of us, you know, is sort of a private celebration, uh, in appreciation of all the good times Mother's given us while she's been here. 
I'm sure it was a lovely idea. <laughs> Gladys, would you mind clasping these for me? Thanks. Uh, Mother, Mother, you're not going to wear the pearls. Well, why not? Well, it, it might be very embarrassing. After all, we agreed there might have been a mix-up at the store, and uh, I, I certainly wouldn't want my mother-in-law to be seen wearing phony pearls. Uh, George might be right, Mother. No, we'll just leave them here until June can take a look at them. After all, if there's been a mistake, we don't want the whole world to know about it. Mrs. Higgins, are you in? Anybody here? detective. Hello, Mr. Robbins. This is Marie, suite 412. Could you come up here right away? The door was open. A few minutes ago, I saw a suspicious-looking character. <laughs> yes, I can give you a good description of him. Okay. All right, I'll be right up. Sorry, Tony. You'll have to finish me up later on. Here you are. Diamonds or pearls. You think maybe I scared him away? Well, it's possible. I tell you what, I'll check around. If there's anything wrong, I'll get back to you. Now, where are you going to be? The laundry room. As soon as I finish changing the linen in the mezzanine barber shop. Fine. Oh, and Marie, now you keep this quiet until we find out something one way or the other, huh? I can take you right now. Oh, well, I, uh, I just changed my mind. I'll come back later. <laughs> On second thought, I'll get that shave right now. As you wish, sir. Sure, sit right over the surface. Hi, Tony. What do you want the clean towels? Stack them up on the table over there. Be sure you give me the right number. Yesterday, I was four short. No, 
to her. I'll get you a clean hot towel. Please. Huh? There they are, Tony. 14 even. Where are the soiled ones? Right over here. Oh, I'll be with you in a minute, sir. Yeah. Hello, barbershop. Oh, yes, Mr. Cunningham. Just a minute, I'll check the appointment book. <laughs> Just trying to speed things up a little. That's all right, Mr. Garden. Huh? They'll be okay. Then what are you doing? I'll let you up for the shave. No, thanks. I've just had a close one. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. I can't understand why Stu isn't here yet. Oh, I'm sure he'll be here shortly. We can go up and look at my new necklace in the meantime. It's good. But, 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 but you can't. I, uh, I mean, there'll be plenty of time after dinner. Now, isn't that just like a man? I won't be able to eat a bite till I see that necklace. Come on, George. <laughs> Tony. Thanks, Tony. Excuse me. Well, I I seem to have misplaced my key. <laughs> I'll have to go down to the desk for another. It'll only take me a minute to... Oh, no, that won't be necessary, George. I have mine. <laughs> well, uh, uh, is this the right one? Well, of course. <laughs> All right. in the bedroom, June. <laughs> oh, George, would you please get Mother's jewel box? Yes, dear. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I'm late. The door was unlocked, so I just walked in. What's wrong with the lights? Well, it must have been a power failure. Oh, well, it doesn't make any difference now, as long as everything is all right. Well, I certainly hope so. I was just about to show your wife my new pearls. Oh, is that so? I'd like to see them myself. <laughs> well... <laughs> there you are. Oh, no. What's the matter? <laughs> Would you believe it, Mrs. Higgins? This necklace is exactly like the one that Stu bought for me. Well, there's no doubt about it. These pearls are worth every bit of $1,500. Oh. Darling, I don't know when I've had a more wonderful time. I know just how you feel. We sure had a lot of fun. <laughs> but Stu, I, I do want to talk to you about the necklace. Oh, the necklace. Yes. Well, honey, I... I know just what you're going to say. You do? Yes, you're going to apologize because you couldn't get it fixed in time for me to wear it tonight. But it oh. didn't matter, darling. The main thing was the sentiment behind it. The fact that you remembered the date all by yourself. That's very nice of you, June, but... Uh... I hope you'll take this in the right way, dear. But since none of my friends have such expensive jewelry, I don't think I'd be happy wearing a $1,500 necklace. Frankly, I think I'd enjoy having one of those simulated pearl necklaces that Adele saw down in Evans Jewelry Store. You would? That's wonderful, darling. Just wonderful. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking the same thing about those expensive golf clubs you bought me. Let's face it, Jill. We just weren't meant to act like millionaires. <laughs>